Okay, so first, the Google Classroom, what you need to do is need a G apps domain. Okay, you can create how to create, go to Computer Center NTST. Uh, you can check the website. I, I, I've put all the information in the chat box. You can uh, check it. So first is the link for uh, Google Classroom invitations. The second link is information for the how to create the G apps domain. Okay. Now, uh, the Google Classroom, I will put the informations on all uh, technical procedure of the exam on the Google Classroom. So basically, you need to have, you need to prepare uh, two devices, a smartphone or laptop, okay? And the other device, it can be also a smartphone, laptop, or tablet, okay? So what you are going to do is you may see this picture here. Uh, if you're doing exam here in laptop, then your camera uh, maybe here, the smartphone camera here. The smartphone camera will be adjusted so that I can see your face and a little bit part of uh, your lower body here, okay? So at least I can see that you are working on the exam, okay? So this will be connected to the Google Meet, okay? This is Google Meet. And this is the exam. And probably if you want to set up uh, a few papers here, you need to set up the paper by yourself, okay? Or you may also do the exam. So this is exam with a smartphone, okay? But you need to be able to adjust your face in front of the webcam, okay? Or, or the uh, smartphone camera. And your laptop, maybe here. This will be the Google Meet. But I prefer, I prefer you doing the, the, the first one, this one, the first one, because I believe your smartphone camera is better resolution than your laptop webcam, right? So I hope you can set up the first one, but if you think that you need to set up the second one, uh, it's up to you, okay? It's up to you. Um, I told you before that I, uh, the, 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 the software that I will going to use, they will detect your face noise and it will detect uh, switching tabs, right? Um, it's, it, I will set that noise maybe not really that important um, because it's really sensitive. So uh, I am afraid that it will detect any any small noises you make, okay? So it's not really important. So I will uh, adjust the noise. And the trust score is, 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 this is not really important. This is not really important. Um, uh, as long as I can see proof of your, all of your works, that, that's okay. So I can see your face here and also webcam for the, the camera, okay? Okay, so um, uh, I will have uh, dummy questions set in 1050, okay, uh, because 
Well, that big check. But I think the dummy questions is, it's, it's not too important for now. It's not too important. So I, um, I'm changing all this. Okay. So so just make sure that uh, we will have the quiz on Monday. Okay, next Monday. So 8, 10, right? And I hope you can prepare from 8 o'clock. So we can talk before the quiz start. Okay. Now, uh, for this quiz, okay, for this quiz, you need to have the G apps joining the classroom, the Google Classroom, and we will do all the um, information for quiz on that platform. I will collect all your um, G apps uh, domain name and then use it for uh, sending the questions. Okay. And the questions will be having a, so the question will be having a timer. So it will be timer and probably having a, a face detection. Okay. Uh, I hope that's a little bit, little, a little bit uh, enlightening. Okay, clear for some parts. So please prepare all of this. Uh, if you still haven't created the apps account, uh, you cannot join the quiz. Okay, so don't uh, do not ask me when the times uh, maybe. Uh, this weekend, or what we are going to do, blah blah blah. You create the G, the uh, G apps account. Click the link that I sent. The classroom, okay, the Google Classroom invitation link. I also uh, write down the link on Moodle, so you can check the Moodle if you want to. If you forget to save this link, okay. Okay, I think. That's the uh, informations for quiz and exam. Okay. Um, this is what we have learned: uh, the partial derivatives. Um, we have learned the introduction, at least for uh, functions of. Uh, more than one variables, right? So, uh, if I check the, let me check the. But I think I already showed you before, right? So, okay, let me just uh, skip that. Okay, let me go here, and we already here at the limits and continuity. So what we are dealing here is we want to approach this point, okay? We want to approach from left, from right, as we are doing the same thing in calculus one, okay? Remember? So in calculus one, the limit theorem says that the left-hand limit should be the same as the right-hand limit, okay? Same in, in as, as one value, right? It's it's provided that, that the limit exists, okay? Now, if we have in three uh, dimensions like this, if you want to approach this point, let's say this point is x0, y0, and z0. Let's say it's, it's this point, okay? To approach that, we can approach from many angles, from many curves that, that we we might have, okay? We can approach from here, from here, from this, this, right? We can approach from anywhere. There are many curves that can approach the point, okay? So 
in order for us to understand what is really going on when we are limit ourselves as x and y, these two coordinates to this point. So this this point here. What is really going to happen? Okay. So first is let's imagine if we are uh, approaching to zero and zero. Okay. If you approach it to zero and zero, of course, if you are replacing x and y, will be zero over zero situations. We cannot define this, right? So how our uh, steps will be, how, how the limit process in all of this is when it, we approach zero and, uh, and zero and on x and y, first is we maybe need to think that y is zero and x is a constant first is that step, okay? So we may take y equals zero, it's here, and we are using this, uh, this x-axis, and then it will be uh, approaching this uh, uh, direction here, so maybe around here, okay? And the second one is when we are limiting only on y-axis, when x is zero. Okay, I hope you understand what I'm really talking about, okay? So limiting the, uh, when x is zero, so it's, it's going to be in uh, y-axis here. So it's going to be here. If we have the plane, okay, we can approach this also. And then we can also limit as y equal x. This is just an example, okay? You can try uh, as many curves as you want, but this is just an example that easy to be to be followed in the in the picture. So if we follow the uh, the y equal x, this is the the y equal x, and you can you can see that it it might it might form a plane that has the the point x0, y0, and z0, right? So it can also approach that way. But well, if you have any random random uh, y equal x squared, y equal uh, 3x, etc., and so forth, it also can be uh, approaching the, the x0, y0, and z0. What you need to do is you can exchange as many times as you want, but here, what I want to prove here is when you have this is zero and this is zero, you might think that, okay, um, it's it's similar to what we did in calculus one. It's, it's appear to be having a one value and it will be uh, limit exists, right? When we are dealing here, it seems that the limit exists because it's zero and it's zero, okay? But when we are doing y equal x, it's not zero. So it's proven that probably limit doesn't exist, okay? Okay, anyway, that's how we are going to process uh, the limit in three dimensions, okay? And we also have these definitions in the open disk. Uh, and uh, we have uh, epsilon delta definitions. And as I said before, uh, the epsilon delta meaning is uh, really small distance, okay? And I think the important one is here. Um, so I think the, the last one is more um, more calculable. If you see if the functions is approaching some value of L1 as the axis of X and Y is approaching some point A, some point B, along, this is C1, okay, along curve one. And then another part is say that it's also approaching the second uh, L2 as, this is the same coordinate, 
okay this is the same coordinate a b a b but on different curve and because l1 is not equal l2 we say this is doesn't exist this is precisely of what we did here this okay this is l1 l2 it's not equal so it doesn't exist okay i hope you you get it okay okay um The next thing is part of uh, this introduction is the continuity. So by definitions, uh, a function is continuous at uh say it's some point x zero and y zero if uh this point is defined and the limit as it's also approaching the the, the coordinate is the same value as when we observe the point on the functions. This is precisely the same as we did in calculus one, okay? When you have the continuity, like the whole thing, the curve, instead of having a hole like that, if you're having a hole like this, meaning the limit exists, right? But it's not continuous. And then the definitions, the second one, uh, the, uh, so A and so A and become B, it, it will be continue on open this, or we say at B, if it is continue at every point, in an open set and thus it is continue everywhere so because of uh, the functions is defined at this point and the limit is the same as when we observe the function itself at that point we can conclude that it's continue at open this and thus it's continue everywhere okay and we have another theorem um, so if functions is Let's say we have this uh, functions, functions G and H, function of X and function of Y. Let's say it's continue at this point, okay? If GX is continue at X zero, then functions of y is also continue at y0. And the second one, if we have composition, let's say uh, composition r continue at x0, y0, if gx is continue at x0, 
Uh, wait, wait, it's wrong. Should be. Should be composition here, sorry. So if H uh, continues, and then G U this means U is equal uh, H. is continue at u okay it's it's actually the same thing as we mentioned from the first one is if you have two functions and this the, the last one if you have a uh, compositions uh, functions The next is I will see how much we have. And I hope you um, you still remember all the limits law, okay, four limits. I will skip that, it's not too important. Okay, I think continuity, we can, uh, can finish the continuity under here. Uh, if I have, uh, maybe I'm giving you a big continuity, uh, some example. Okay. So let's say if I have uh, functions, um, If we have this, then how to to um, to think uh, is this functions continue everywhere or, or or what? Okay, how do we deal with this? Is imagine this is uh, two compositions, right? It's not a most composition. Sorry, it's a two functions. So we can deal with this and this, right? If we think this is as G and this is as Y, uh, H, sorry. And we think that this is continue everywhere, right? For X, this is also continue everywhere, right? This is just a normal parabola that you can see and it's continuous, right? Then based on what we have learned here, we can conclude that this also continue everywhere, okay? Okay. And if we have the compositions like uh, sine, um, let's say the same, it's the same amount of the equations. We can think of the inside function is, let's say it's h, okay? And we already did it that this is continuous everywhere, okay? This is continuous everywhere, right? And we have the outside functions is, let's say, g. Let's say it's, it's sine u, okay? And sine is, is also continuous everywhere. 
So we may conclude that this function also continues everywhere. Okay, it's, it's not that difficult, right? Okay. Going to see next. Um, it's the 14.3, it's the partial derivative. So this is the actually the main uh, idea for the the chapter. Okay. Okay. Let's start from these two functions. Okay. Uh, let me remind you that this is function of x and y. So we have two variables. Okay. Okay. By definitions, let me write the definition first and we explore how, how we deal with this partial derivative. Okay, by definition, if we have z equal the functions of x and y, then the first uh, partial derivatives of with respect okay, to x and y are uh, we can write this as f x and f y okay and the definition of both of this f is uh, the similar definition with uh, with limit definitions We already deal with limits uh, a lot, right? It's the same. What you need to do is make it two variables. And then for fx, you need to plus the x, okay? plus the x with h, okay? And then divide by h. And you can do that also for y. And yeah, provided the limit exists. So as usual, as we see from previous uh, previous uh, example and limit, right? Okay. So what, what this is about. Okay. So first, the first one is when we are dealing with two variables, but we are approaching just x. Right? The second one, we are dealing with two variables, we just approach with y. Okay? And what does it mean? As a consequence, okay, if we have, let me just go to example and, and see, uh, can you uh, familiar, can you, uh, I want you to be familiar, familiarized with the, all this process, okay? So if I have a function of two variables, let's say 3x uh, minus x squared, y squared, uh, plus 2x cubed, y, okay. If, okay, so, so it's, it's um, similar to implicit differentiations, but the difference is we are now explicitly differentiate with x and differentiate explicitly with y that's that's a little bit different implicit we don't want to say uh, we still differentiate with respect to x but we also differentiate y as dy dx right but here we differentiate with x and also y so let's write uh so if i write this 
this means we differentiate with respect to x and treat y as a constant. Okay? So actually, in reality, what we are going to do, we differentiate the x. So 3x becomes 3, okay? And this 2 becomes negative 2x. And y squared is just a constant now, okay? And 3, 2 becomes 6x squared and y, okay? You get it? Okay, this is really important basis on for uh, all the partial derivatives, okay? If I differentiate fy for, for the same functions, okay? 3x becomes zero, That's, it's a constant now. So we differentiate with respect to y and treat x as a constant. And then we see now uh, negative x squared, y squared is become negative two, x squared, y, okay? And plus, 2x cubed because y becomes 1. Okay, get it? I hope you get it. Okay. Uh, we There are uh, several terms that you can choose. Okay. This is the first way we write the partial derivative. Other symbols or terms that we, we can also use. Okay. We can use as uh, is using the Leibniz notations. This is the same as also using Z. Or this also you can use. All, all the same. And sometimes uh, we can also write in x become one like this, and the y will be two. It's all. Oh, it can be also. But I think it will be a lot easier for you to mark this as x, okay, rather than one or two. Um, one or two may be a little bit difficult if you if you see in the paper. Okay, let me go to some, maybe just one example, and then we can go to, uh, maybe here is the example here. Mm. First is just f, so I like that. Maybe going here. Um, x, e, x squared, y. Okay. Uh, find f, x, f, y, and then evaluate both of them at point uh, one, L and two. 
I'm giving you some couple minutes to check uh, whenever you get the idea of partial derivative or not. Okay. The other example. Um, So, which means uh, the, the, the final answer for this is you need to ca calculate fx at this point and calculate f1 at this point. If you finish the finding the answer, you can write the chat box. Uh, this is a, this is b, what is a, what is b? Okay. This is you can try to work on that. The second example is uh, having sign. And then calculate the Leibniz the partial of x and partial of y. Meaning it's just the same as the number number one. Meaning you need to find the partial x, find partial y. So the answer is uh, c, this is c. Uh, I think this will be difficult to write on your uh, chat box, but you can write the first one. I will uh, do the second one here. So let me do the the. Uh, usually, I'm I'm sounding the Leibniz as do do f do x. So we say do f do x. So first thing is remember the chain rule. Chain rule, first you need to differentiate sine becomes cos. Write everything in in the uh, in the inside, right? And then multiply with the chain rule of the uh, partial x. So we we write step by step. Okay, if you want to do directly uh, calculations, uh, that's okay. And write this. Okay. So we can write this as. And now what we did is we just differentiate with respect to x, right? So it will be 1, 1 plus y. Okay. And then the second one is partial of y. So the same, we write cos because it's everything is there, right? And write everything on the inside and write the partial of y of the x. And now we are treating x as a constant and we differentiate y. It's like differentiating one over x and it's becoming negative 1 over uh, x squared, right? So we can write this as, because it has negative, I will write negative in front. And then the rest will be, let's say this is, uh, this is just, a, sorry, this is x, still x, it's a constant. And below we just take the squared on 1 plus y. Okay, any questions? So how about the this one? Anyone calculate? What is the first one? Partial of x. What is partial of y? Anyone finish? Okay, anyone? No?
Okay. So what is A, partial x, when point is 1 and ln 2? For those who are wondering how we are going to do exam, I already told you in the first part of the lecture, uh, so you can watch later, okay? If you're still confused, um, still wondering and asking, uh, you can ask your friend, okay? And the next lecture, I will be, uh, like the, the quiz next Monday, uh, I will open the Google Meets from the Google, uh, probably, probably just as usual because you will be using probably laptops on your exam. But it, it depends on you. Okay? If you want to use the smartphone, that's okay too. Okay, so anyone? Hello, am I speaking to students there? I will not continue the lecture if you are not paying attention. And I can skip the lecture on this chapter and directly we can have some quiz. Okay you are not answering, then maybe I'll skip the quiz and all the students will have zero on the point. Do you want that? So if you, ha you keep silent, so I think you agree, right? Okay, then why you are not paying attention? So this is the difficulty of ha having a online class. I'm, I'm not sure that you are listening or not, paying attention or not, right? someone answering okay at, at, at last finally someone okay I will give you a bonus point Um, 
fx6 of y is 2. Uh, not really. I think half correct. Half correct. Let me check. But still, I will give you the point. So fx. Uh, so. the one who just come in and come in late if you are like already almost one hour late i'm suggesting not coming to the class okay okay so we are seeing this as a product rule okay the product rule so first we have we differentiate x become one and we have e x squared y plus, okay, we differentiate the right one, becomes two uh, x squared y, and then e x squared y. So this become, so this means this become two x y, and then multiply with x, and multiply with e x squared y. And uh, we can put the one and L and two. Let me finish this first. So E and then uh, L and two plus two L and two E L and two. So it will be two. Uh, let me put here. So two plus two L and two. This is two to two L and four. The Fy okay, Fy it's just the we treat the x as a constant. So x squared and then x has become x cubed and then e x squared y and plug in the coordinate it will be e ln2 or 2 okay. okay okay and then the next part is um geometric uh perspective okay so if we have uh and let's say we are observing this point A, B. To a point on, on some functions, the plane, okay? So let me make, maybe the plane is here. Okay. 
and the point is here. Okay. So this P is, let's say, um, A, B, C, okay. Okay. Now, if we can imagine um, any curve that apply on this this plane, okay. Let's say this is if this is let's say this is the curve the curve on the plane okay now how we are going to imagine the partial derivative as a graph. So this is Z. Let's say that's our, our uh, functions. Okay, so first, we will have This is our fx, okay, or uh, the f to x, okay, and this is okay, and this is our partial y or. And this is, uh, forgot to mention the other curve. So let's say this is C1, this is C2, okay? So what does that mean is, that this partial, uh, partial X and partial Y this will be the slope in the x direction, okay? And partial y means it's the slope in y direction. As you can observe from, from these two, two, uh, two lines, okay? Okay. If, for example, you have um, a finding slope in x, y direction at for z equal, and let's say this is equal Now, uh, if we if we want to find the partial x, okay, it's only negative x, right? The other one will be a, the constant, and it will be zero. The partial y is just negative two y, okay, and at this point, the partial x will only have negative one over two. And this partial y, at this point, we will have 
just negative 2. Okay. If you see the number, it's just a simple number, right? But if you are looking at the geometric perspective, what is really happen is the number here means the z will decrease one unit for every two units increase in x. And this z will decrease, uh, sorry, two units for every uh, one unit increase in Y. Okay. I hope you get the idea, okay? Y of X is negative X. Let me check. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Should be having negative in the front. Sorry. Okay. Okay, uh, I will show you maybe, but maybe later on the later courses. Um, I'm planning to have some exercise for chapter 12 and 13, but maybe I will do this, uh, some assignment on some exercise for you later on the uh, Google Classroom. So let me continue this. Uh, functions of more than two variables. So for example, we we write in terms of uh, let's say the partial x of x, y, z. And we write the limit definitions. And precisely we are writing the same, the same definitions. So x plus h, y, but now we have z, okay? And then minus x, y, z. And precisely, this is just the same thing happen. So similar, similar process. Similar process with two variables, okay? At the end of the day, if, okay, u is a function of n variables, so it can be any number of variables you want, and u is a function of x1, x2, until some xn. Its partial derivative with respect to the how many variable it has of x, okay, is
So this is all the variables that we want to write here until some n, okay? So you can imagine this like x, y, z, v, w, z, and uh, a lot of variables there. S minus. And divide by h. And we can write this as so if you have f, x, y, z, the example. This is E, X, Y, L, and Z. So find the, if you want to find the partial X. So X is here, right? So we can do that just differentiating the, the E and it will be Y and all will be a constant. Okay. And partial Y same thing, but now it's x. And now partial z, we differentiate l and z, become one over z, right? So it's become this, okay? I think that will be easy example for, uh, for you. Okay, that's functions of more than two variables. So the idea is just similar with the two variables, but you can have a lot, a lot of variables, okay? Okay, next thing, also in still in this chapter, and this section, uh, we have, it's called the higher uh, derivatives. Or higher order of partial derivatives. So previously we have this partial x and partial y, right? Or let me let me start with just with, with x first. So from here we can take the derivative partially. So let's take with respect to x and we can write this as f x x okay but we can also take derivative with respect to y so this will be f x y okay you need to remember this order okay so this will be meaning we need to start with the with differentiation with x and then we differentiate with y we need to see it uh, one by one step by step okay we can also write this in terms of this like a second derivative, okay? And also this is okay. And we may also have
at least for this x y we have four combinations like this okay it's better we start with some example let's start with the example one And let's find all the higher derivatives. So start with f s f x x. So, or probably we start with the f x and x f y, partial x and partial y. Uh, are there any other way, uh, another ways to write this? Uh, you need you mean the the this this the higher derivatives um i think the simplest uh, the simplest form that you can write is i think this the fxx um yeah you can also write with z if you want but i don't want to complicate things so i'm just skipping this or you can exchange like uh with x with one and y with two, but I, I think the number will make make um, complicated. Like you can write f x with f one or f x x become f one one. That's also fine. If you want to write like that, that's also fine. If you want to write um, this in terms of z, that's also fine. Like maybe z like that change f to z. It's also common. And same, change f with c. Yeah, I think uh, for the written form, uh, you don't need to be um, worry about that. You can write in any forms as long as it is uh, legitimate, okay, and it's already common in use in in, in any textbook, okay. Okay, if you see this example here, if you want to check the the partial x, we can write the partial x. Right? And we can check the partial y. Okay. And then we can take the partial x partial x okay so this is actually let me write like this so that you may you will understand what is happening here so this will be 6x uh, plus and then plus 2y cubed and then if I'm, uh, I want to find the x y. This is precisely and we can differentiate with respect to y. So it will be six x y squared. And if we are going to have y x, what is partial y is this? Okay, if you find it in the exam, you can just ask. If you don't ask, then that's your fault. Okay, this becomes 6x. Uh, y squared, oh wait, wait, is this? 
Oh, I think this should be squared, sorry. And we have f y y. This become six x squared y negative four. Okay. I hope you get the the whole idea of these partial derivatives. Okay. Hmm. There is another one theorem for this higher derivatives. It's called the Clairaut theorem. Okay. So if uh, f is a function, Uh, define on a disk, let's say D, and such that this fxy and fyx are continuous. On D, okay. Then for uh, every point, let's say point X, Y in a real number, so there will be Or if you want to change this point into exact A, B, so that you will not get confused on Y, X, and X, Y. Okay. If you see this theorem, you will see here this is precisely the same, right? Okay, that's all what it is. Okay. Uh, let me show you another example for this theorem. If we have uh, x, y, z uh, functions, uh, y, e to the x, plus x, l, and z. Okay, let me show you the partial x. Partial x is just this, and plus l and z, uh, partial y, or maybe let me just write this x and z. So partial z is is x over z, okay? So what I want to do is I want to show you that f x z z is the same as f z x z, same as f z z x, okay? And now um, f x z. is from the from here this will be one over z okay and f z x is so one over z okay and f z z is 
negative x over z squared. Okay. Now f x z z is this, right? F uh, z x z is also the same, right? And f z z x is also the same. So all having the same result. And that's why we have the theorem here. So for every point, there will be such that this partial x, partial y, and partial y, partial x. And that will be equal. Okay. Okay, uh, because we have learned the, all the, the partial things, uh, we may use it into equations. We call partial differential equations. For instance, uh, we have this equations here that is called the Laplace equations. Um, it's on the heat, I think conduction, the electric potential, and others. And yeah, uh, you can pre precisely using uh, differentials to solve some uh, physics problem and phenomena. Um, I think this is more more of more or less is physics. Another things uh, beside the, the the equations, we have also implicit. But partial. Okay. This is just a method, that are just a tools. Okay. Uh, let me show you how we are going to to do the implicit in partial. Okay. So if you want to find a slope of a sphere. So find slope of sphere in y directions, meaning we need to find in terms of partial y, right? Okay. So, so here's the deal. So let's let's write all the sphere equations, okay? And then we are doing partial. We are doing partial here. Okay. And now, what we are going to do is letting the x as a constant. So this will be a constant. And z, we are treating like implicitly. Okay. Let me write here. So x becomes zero plus 2y and plus 2z and then we are treating it 
as um, implicitly so we differentiate z with respect to y so we uh, we need to put dz dy or the uh, f you can use f or, or z same this is constant is zero And dz over dy is, uh, this is canceling each other. It's negative y over z. And plug in the, the, uh, the point. So it's one over three divided by two over three, it's negative half. Okay, similar when we are dealing with the um, y equal f of x. Okay? For example, x plus uh, y squared is two. We are doing it uh, partially Uh, implicitly, sorry. So this will be one plus two y and then the y dx. This is what you are doing in, in this is calculus one. If you're wondering why it is happening, uh, I cannot explain in all details, but this is calculus one in implicit differentiations, okay? And here, why we need to make the z in terms of dz dy. Why? Because we define z in terms of x and y as a function. Okay, this is important for your concept. Here, you define y is function of x. Okay? And here, you define z is function of x, y. So that means when you implicitly uh, differentiate with partial derivatives. So, so here you are differentiating with respect to y here, okay? So, so the x will be constant. And y, we differentiate y. And z, we can also differentiate z because z is having variable y inside. I hope you understand this part of implicit uh, differentiations for a partial. Uh, sometimes it will be really useful, okay, especially if you are dealing with um, some equations in physics and you want to to take uh, approach uh, implicitly because you think maybe it will be faster. And I think several equation can be solved faster using implicit differentiation, okay? Okay, that's it for the partial derivatives on uh, sections 14.3. Uh, so this is uh, n of 14.3, okay, n of 14.3. Mm. The next one will be next Wednesday after the quiz. Next one is 14.4. Okay, it will be the tangent. Uh, let me write here first. Just writing the title. It will be the tangent plane. So I will not forget what we are going to do next. Tangent planes. Okay. So in calculus one, we learn tangent line. And now in calculus two, we learn tangent plane, okay? So uh, what else? Uh, okay, so um, let me go back to a little bit information for your exam, okay? So please prepare as I mentioned before. Uh, the most important thing that you need to prepare is your Google, okay? So 
make the GApps domain. It was provided by the school, of course. Uh, apply the GApps domain. Go to the Google Classroom and wait for my announcement. Uh, before the quiz, I will have some exercise and I want that exercise to be uh, to be worked on. Okay, so you need to work on that exercise. Okay, I think that's it for today, and uh, later I will upload the video. So you may uh, rewatch all the things for the partial derivative, okay? And you can have exercise on chapter 12 and 13, okay? If you don't have any questions, I will stop the lecture. So is there any questions? So if you don't have questions regarding all the exam, quiz, final things, uh, that means you understand from what I've told you, okay? So I think I need to just stop this recording and